Kweni, um, Christina Dishnakas, Manawaska Zibin Donjaba, Ajijak and Odam, Omamu and Eni Nishnabe Kwendao. Um, my name is Chrissy McCray. I'm the Executive Director of Native Land Digital. Um, as Rosemary had mentioned, I am uh, Omama Winini Madawaskarini Anishinaabe Kwe. So I'm Algonquin from the uh, Madawaska River system. Um, and I am joined here today with my, my colleague Rudo to talk to you about Native Land Digital. Hi everyone, this is Rudo from the Board of Native Land Digital. And it's an absolute delight to be here with you finally sharing with you about native land. Um, we're gonna try to keep our discussion as short as possible so we can have, I think, a lively discussion with you all. So as I mentioned in the Slack, please feel free to ask any questions and we're happy to um, answer those at the end of this. So again, thank you for being with us and I'll hand it back to Christine. Okay, so um, what we'll do is we'll start with an overview of uh, native land. So native land is an online mapping resource uh, It's found at native-land.ca. Um, we are an online map that maps out indigenous territories, indigenous treaties, indigenous languages. Uh, we also provide educational and resource materials. So our goal is to uh, shift the common held uh, settler colonial narrative that uh, these lands, you know, were kind of void of people upon um, upon arrival. So what we're really doing is putting Indigenous knowledge, um, Indigenous connection to place as the main narrative through an online mapping tool. So we're really trying to shift that understanding from what's been long held to an understanding of, um, you know, from an Indigenous perspective of what our land is. So Native Land Digital started in 2014-2015 uh, with uh, founder Victor Temprano, who is a, a non-Indigenous person, and he was involved in, uh, in some activist uh, work with some First Nations in British Columbia. And while he was out on the land and in partnership with these Indigenous communities, he began to consider a little bit more deeply what, what the history of the land was, who has been here. Uh, for, for a very long time, uh, often using the term since time immemorial. And further, what are the stories? What are the understandings? And then he started to think about ways in which um, he might be able to create a platform to be able to tell these stories and in came uh, Native Land Digital. So for the kind of first steps of native land, you can see here, um, this, this was one of our older versions of the map itself. And you'll notice even in, in the first iterations, uh, you know, we still have the toggle feature where we have territories, languages, or treaties, but then also, and I think kind of most importantly to point out is there are also political lines as understand, understood in our colonial society today. Um, so, in 2015, Victor was kind of on his own and really doing this work as a labor of, of love. Um, he's still very much involved to date. And then uh, as time went on and the map developed more and more, um, around 2018, Native Land was governed by a uh, board of directors when we became incorporated as a Canadian not-for-profit organization. And... Uh, at this point in time, there was an advisory board that also came uh, came on to assist in some of the, the work that we do. So then we move into kind of how it's going at, uh, at present day. So I was hired as the executive director of Native Land Digital in, uh, in March of this year. So really just a few days before um, everything went on lockdown in Ontario, uh, where I'm coming to you from. Um, at this point, so I, I work uh, part time. Victor's still very much around. We are supported by um, a group of, um, of individuals on the board of directors. We have hired a digital communications coordinator. Uh, we are supported by a research assistant. Um, and we are currently looking at um, even expanding our team a little bit more uh, to hiring a dedicated research director. So we're in the midst of uh, developing partnerships with a number of organizations. We have a lot of projects on the go that really uh, lend themselves to the educational portion of what we do with our map, um, as well as we're looking at ways that we can improve our research, right? What's more, um, 
I think looking at it a little bit more in depth and as well, ensuring that we are doing our research and putting information out into the world that that comes from that indigenous lens, those indigenous ways of knowing. And so really we're looking at ways that the map can become something where indigenous people are able to represent themselves on the map. So just a few, throw a few, a few numbers out at you. Um, in 2019 on Columbus Day, um, also known as Indigenous Peoples Day in the US, we had uh, 250,000 visitors on the site. Uh, this, we kind of broke that record a little bit this year and we'll get into that uh, later on. Um, we currently have six board members. So we are governed by an Indigenous Board of Directors. Uh, we have five members of the advisory council and we have four part-time staff. Um, and so we're, we're continuously growing and we're continuously looking at adding additional territories to the map. Okay, so um, at this point, I'd love to share with you a little bit about how native land works. I think most people probably have already experienced the website before and it's relatively straightforward where uh, what you have is an interactive map that shows overlapping territories of um, native lands. And then the, the, the main way that you can interact with native land is by searching your location, and then it brings you to um, the native lands that um, are associated with that location, which can be overlapping in some cases. Um, and at that point, what you are then able to do is to go into the specific pages of those um, communities as well. This is an aspect that not a lot of people or many people are familiar with the main map, but what not a lot of people know is that there's actually also um, a dedicated page for every single territory on native land, where what we're showing there is not only kind of our sources for the maps in terms of um, how the polygons were created, but also any related websites, any related resources that we have available. Um, all of our sources are on there as well as a change log. So every single um, activity, any, every single update to the map is actually reflected on these pages. And one thing that we've talked a lot about is how to give communities more control and access in terms of the content that goes on these pages. That's something that we're working on in terms of improving our technology, as well as our engagement with communities. Um, now that we have uh, dedicated staff on Native Land, we can do more of that in terms of giving communities more in involvement in the content that goes on these pages. Um, I figured I'd talk a little bit about the cartography because it's a mapping conference and I think it's actually really interesting how we do the cartography in terms of how it works on native land and how the data gets on there. So it's actually um, the way that the data gets added is that there's a plugin that was created by Victor, the founder of native land who Christine mentioned for WordPress, um, where every single uh, polygon is created directly within WordPress and then it gets pushed into um, Mapbox from there. So um, what that means is that in terms of the digitization, there actually, it happens directly on the WordPress platform so that our research um, assistants and research um, coordinators that are involved in this are actually not uh, using any GIS. They don't have to know any GIS to be able to add data. And that's also thinking about communities um, in terms of giving them modifying this data. Um, something else that's kind of interesting to mention that we often talk about is the accuracy or the fidelity of the data and what uh, makes us draw the polygons that we do. So Victor talks a lot about um, in the early days, he was essentially just on his own digitizing a lot of maps and didn't have either the skills or the time to be able to digitize them with great fidelity in accordance to natural boundaries. Uh, but one thing that we often talk about is that we intentionally keep it vague because we don't want this site to be used as a way for uh, thinking about land demarcation in an exact way. It's more to give an overall idea, right? about um, the state of native lands historically and present. So we intentionally kind of keep the data a little bit vague while we still draw on, of course, on the maps that we are sent. Um, but in that way, we hope to keep things a little bit blurry, as it were. So this is an example, actually. Um, I'm originally from Curaçao, so at some point I searched Curaçao and there was no data for that. So I found a map from Decolonial Atlas and I shared that with the native land team. And then somebody went into the WordPress site to digitize and add that in that way. And then it gets pushed to Mapbox and then it appears on the map. Um, one final thing I'll mention is that we do have an API. It's entirely open source. So all of this data can be utilized to develop uh, third party technologies or used in any kind of maps that people might want to create. And we've seen a lot of that recently where people are starting to use the native land API. One example of that was from the Code for Anchorage Collective um, that recently created this land acknowledgement SMS and Facebook messaging service where you could send 
your address or site or location to an SMS or, or Facebook Messenger. And within a few minutes, it sends back um, the specific territories that are associated with that location on native land. So an open source extension of native land, and we're seeing a lot more of these um, as part of the open source API. If you checked um, native land on Indigenous Peoples Day this past Monday, you might have seen this instead of our beautiful map. And that is because we were overloaded with requests, as Christine mentioned earlier. And so that's something that we're working on is trying to secure our website stability, um, thinking about server space. And so we're actively looking for advice on this. If anybody knows of a better server or has experience with that, please let us know because we want to avoid that from happening in the future um, for days like this. We've got Thanksgiving right around the corner. So another occasion on which native land goes is potential to go viral. And just a few notes for the geo folks out there. Um, if you'd like to get involved with native land, if you'd like to help us out, we're actively and always looking for volunteers. There are a ton of maps to digitize. So if somebody wants to help with digitization, any help is absolutely welcome from the community, as well as helping us think about digitization and how to make that more effective. Um, we have some technical needs around adding GeoJSON and how to add higher fidelity maps. So if that's something that enthuses you, we can put you in touch with our technical team that can speak to that. And we're also starting to dream about different apps that can help democratize uh, the digitization of these maps and to help think about how folks can decolonize um, their own native home in terms of where they reside and adding to the map in that way and just making it much more of a, of a contribution of a volunteer contributed uh, process and workflow. So we have a lot on the go, but we also have a lot coming up. Um, just a bit of a selection of some of the, uh, the items that we have. So we have just launched our, our Patreon site. So that's a really big step for us, something that, uh, that took us a while to get to, but certainly happy that it's there. Uh, we're also looking at updating our website and just making some improvements um, as to, I guess, function and as well as uh, how user-friendly it is. As I had mentioned, we are uh, currently hiring a research director and we are in the interview process right now. Uh, we are also looking to include Indigenous languages as well as pronunciations of place names or tribes just to make sure that uh, when we're, we're doing something, say like land acknowledgements, that we are properly pronouncing those different communities and those nations that we speak to. Uh, we're also looking at improving a little bit of our, our outreach and our communication with the native land community through um, social media, through, through blog posts and so on. Um, and as well, we are always looking to expand our map in the sense of uh, adding additional territories, um, certainly in places that we've already mapped or started to map, as well as some of the new areas too within the world. So um, as Rudo, you know, kind of mentioned, uh, we deliberately have a bit of vagueness surrounding our map and the way that we present the information. And, that, uh, as, as Rudo had said, that is done um, from, you know, from a very deliberate standpoint. Uh, something to, to keep in mind as well is that we always look to community members or to knowledge keepers to help us to improve the map and, and what we have listed on the map itself. Uh, so certainly know that everyone is always welcome to reach out if there are certain fixes or perhaps additional sources that we could add. Um, so a few things that we're, we're looking to the community for is um, we're looking for increased engagement, particularly from Indigenous communities. So kind of speaking to that idea of having Indigenous communities represent themselves on the map. Uh, we are looking at adding some additional layers. So perhaps these storytelling layers where, again, Indigenous people can, can tell stories of their own territories so that it's really a way to bring these, these territories, these places, and these understandings to life in a visual way uh, that's accessible for, you know, for educational purposes. Uh, we're also looking at easier editing capabilities, so kind of like a, a collaborative wiki type of formatting. Uh, we're also, you know, always mindful of funding uh, limitations, so looking at ways that we can increase our capacity kind of in-house and be able to, um, in turn, provide a better source for anyone who uses native land. Um, as well, we're looking at improving our responsiveness to our uh, to emails and to some of the communications that we get. So we've uh, we've recently hired a really wonderful digital communications coordinator who has helped us uh, make our way through our inboxes. 
Um, as well, we're looking at uh, improving um, educational sources, uh, whether it's something that can tie into uh, educational curriculum at all levels, but then also helping to put the message out there, you know, why, why Native land, why we do what we do, and the fact that community uh, community engagement, community source knowledge is absolutely vital to, um, to Native land. And as well, too, we're always open to suggestions that the Native land community might have. So certainly, if, um, if anyone wants to reach out to us, we're always happy to, to hear from you. And you can connect with us um, in a number of ways. Okay, um, that was a fantastic presentation. Thank you, Christine and Rudo. Um, I know we wanted to have time for discussion, but unfortunately we've kind of come up to the end of our time. There was one question that I just think is interesting that you spoke to a little bit. Um, Daniel Huffman mentioned, if you, you mentioned on things you were thinking to improve the map and if there are plans to give a sense of change over time, because oftentimes he knows that part of history, excuse my um, notifications, uh, that's erased in the dyna dynamism of indigenous territories and people moving around. And so this, I'm guessing, is speaking to the, um, like whether we're mapping a specific point in time or we map over time and how those territories change, correct? Yeah, it's just if you've thought about how to change, I mean, change over time is probably one of the more difficult things to map, so. Yeah, it's certainly something that we have talked about at length. And very deliberately native land, uh, our map does not map one specific point in time. So you'll often see like using Florida as an example, we do list the Calusa Indians who unfortunately are no longer around, but still having them on the map, um, you know, speaks to that larger story of um, genocide, you know. Uh, so yes, it's something that we've thought about, something that we want to incorporate in some way, but also something that's increasingly difficult to do. So, um, yeah. you know, if we find a way or if anyone thinks of a way to do it, certainly reach out. Well, I think you've inspired a lot of people and giving, giving us some direct asks is um, very, very, uh, very welcome. Um, so thank you both, Rudo and Christine. and I.